Okay, on this one, I'm nowhere near the math. And I'm not trying to be near the math because the math would just be too much <laughs> for what's supposed to be a pseudo scientific, semi entertaining religious talk. I don't think the math will be appropriate. So we'll stick to the philosophy. Not that I'm not capable of doing the math. Uh, I have a master's degree, but that's not the point. <laughs> You try to connect with people, yeah, and mathematics, although it's the universal language, mm. uh, you can't really get too complicated with it before you lose 90% of your audience. <laughs> so, we're talking about the Casimir effect. This is one of the proofs that they have for suggesting that there's virtual particles in the vacuum of space. Mm -hmm. where they're telling us that space is something when space is nothing just a quick note uh, the concept of nothing I think it's an Indian one anyway nothing is what happens um, when you quantify things you go from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 then there's nothing but once you start to make things real and continuous then the concept of nothing you miss it when you go beyond zero and you go into fractions, you've missed it. So when you say, what is nothing to the universe, you look at all the atoms in the universe. If there was to disappear, and then there was ten left, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. As soon as the last atom disappears, that means there's nothing in the universe. Nothing only applies to quantized um, phenomena. Now, as back to the Kazmir effect Kazmir you can google it yeah as proof that there's virtual particles in the vacuum of space I just wanted people to consider the electrostatic repulsion that takes place between atomic nuclei the nucleus of an atom is composed of protons and neutrons when you bring two nuclei together obviously positive and positive repel each other so the way they test the Kazmir effect by bringing two fine plates together within a hundred times the diameter of uh, the nucleus now what I wanted to point out is that every time you measure the shape of our proton it fluctuates sometimes the shape is um, it's, it's not gonna be a perfect circle all, all, all the time it's composed of um, quarks so sometimes they'll be sticking out that way sometimes that way when they're sticking out this way and two plates are together and they're very fine plates um, you won't notice any different but what happens when um, through time the fluctuation changes uh, some of the protons might be orientated this way in terms of what the shape looks like and sometimes they're like that but when it's looking like that and these two plates are within a uh, hundred times the diameter of it the positive force from this proton will affect another, uh, the other proton and the other plate. You will get that Casimir effect, <laughs> yeah. But it will be due to the changing shapes, yeah, of the protons within the atoms that the plates are made from. You will get repulsion, and once it's repulsed, the nuclei is the body, so you will get that repulsive force, yeah. So uh, I just wanted to add that um, from a theist point of view, you can't tell us that something we'll never see measure. Yeah, you're gonna br believe in something that we'll never see or measure, and then tell us that we're stupid for saying the same thing. Now, virtual particles are things we'll never be able to see or measure, but we just have to take people's word for it that they exist. And the Casimir effect is one of the reasons. One of the reasons they give um, for deducing that there is virtual particles in the vacuum of space so basically circumstantial evidence is saying that when I bring two plates together and they repel it must be because of virtual particles in the vacuum of space but that's just saying when I pray to God and a miracle happens it must be because of God you're saying exactly the same thing so um, to look at space, vacuum of space as ether, 
Um, I'm a bit reluctant to do that uh, because emptiness, nothingness is nothingness in it. But now they're saying there's no such thing as nothing and this is one of the proofs they're using. I don't like it that much. I don't know if they've considered the fluctuating aspects of, uh, of, of protons, for example, and how they would cause a force. Yeah, a repulsion, electrostatic repulsion. Yeah, when these uh, plates are brought together, a hundred times the diameter of a um, nuclei, uh, that's the separation between them. Yeah, I don't. I think if the shape of these protons is uh, is a uh, more densely denser towards the other plate. I think a hundred times the distance it can still have a small force because the Casimir uh, effect is a very very small force it could be due to that that's just a consideration I want people to have 